Hi, my name is Jory Brigham. Um, I've been woodworking for a little over 20 years now. In woodworking, there's many different ways to approach a project, both in mindset and technique. I believe it's important for everyone to find the methods that work best for them. I think because I'm fairly self-taught, um, I'm very untraditional in the ways that I do things. And so this has created unique style. Um, not only a unique style in the way I design, but also a unique style in the way I build. I wanted to not only take the opportunity to redesign a stool that I did years ago, but I also wanted to share with you the techniques that work for me, uh, my favorite tools, and basically show you a project like this from start to finish. So one of my favorite things that I've learned over the years is templating. It's allowed me to be very concise and perfect about what I want to build before I actually move forward and build it. So the first template that we have is I call the mother. Um, you know, we're going to get this perfect. We're going to get it all these radiuses exactly how we want. Um, this is going to end up to be basically the exact same shape as our stool. So as you can see, I'm getting a real vague, kind of ambiguous um, shape going on here. Um, and it's going to give me something to work off of. This is the finished template. This is the mother. Now we have to duplicate it. The next step is we take our mother. We're basically going to transfer her perfection onto the second one. Um, we're going to do this by using a spiral router bit. All three of these are made by Whiteside. They're a little bit pricey, but by all means, I think they're worth it. Um, if you're gonna have one great bit for pattern cutting, I think this would be it. One of the main purposes that we're trying to achieve by having these smaller templates is that we're gonna have a usable, workable piece that we can then create a sled from. And when we create that sled, it's gonna be very important that we have these angles. All right, so I just grabbed this from my stock of wood back there. Um, as you can see, it's pretty rough. We're gonna start with a joiner. Um, typically in milling and straight lining, you will start with a joiner and move on over the planer. And I think anything will show up pretty nicely of what we're trying to achieve here, which is basically a flat surface on the bottom, a flat surface on the side. Um, once we get a nice flat surface on the bottom, then we can run it through the planer and then we can get that consistent thickness. As that's really the purpose of a joiner. All right, now that we have our board milled up and, and straight lined, and we're gonna take our templates that we cut up and we're gonna place them on here. Basically, the only thing that we're trying to achieve right now is getting this joint perfect. Now the idea of a sled is to create an easy way to replicate cuts um, and very concise at that um, using this edge against the fence of the table saw. You can then cut a very parallel straight line. So the next step in this process is we're going to piece this back together, we're going to make our mark to the domino, we're going to domino it, and this is when it's a good time to give it a good inspection. Um, make sure that the joint's tight, make sure you're happy with it. If there's any changes you need to make, this is the time. Now we're going to line this back up. We're going to make one nice solid mark. And this is going to allow us to 
identify where we want those coals. You know, I want to keep this clamp in the center of the joint as much as possible, as well as perpendicular. So I see an opportunity right here. I'm just going to cut that back. And then also, we're going to cut a nice big one here. So as you can see here, there's only two clamps on here. Um, it's always good anytime you can only use two clamps. Um, and the reason why is we kept in mind the coals. The first time I built this stool, there had to have been about 20 clamps on it. And you know, you got one clamp holding up another clamp to keep that from slipping, and you keep that clamp from slipping by using an another clamp. Once they got the clamps, we're gonna go ahead and clean up this line. We still have this line left over that we took from the template. Um, and we're just gonna take away the bulk of the material so that when we go to router it, we're just routering a lot less. Now we're able to put this mother template back on. This time we start thinking about the backrest, um, how we're gonna attach it, and most importantly, how we're gonna cut this miter. Obviously this is a very odd shape that we're working with, and these are times where it's a perfect example of why a sled works so good. So the next step is a somewhat optional step. I like to taper my legs down, especially when you're working with eight quarter stock. It tends to be a little bit bulky at the bottom. It looks real nice at the top. As you get to the bottom, it's nice to slim it down. I'm gonna mark this at seven eighths. Get a straight edge. The next step after cutting our curve on the bandsaw, we're gonna to wanna to scallop it. And scalloping is basically just taking a scoop out of the top. It's gonna to be a real flat surface. Um, but is what this does, it just makes it a little bit more comfortable. Okay, we have our seat template. Next thing we want to do is transfer this onto the actual material that we'll be using. We're 
We're gonna make a couple holes in order to guide us and tell us when to stop carving. We're gonna do that by using a drill bit with a stop on it. And we're gonna get those consistently on both sides. We're gonna measure it out and we're probably do about three of them. Going a little bit deeper as we get towards the back. So dominoing for the seat and the footrest can be kind of tricky. I made a fairly simple domino template in order to find the points where we'll be attaching the seat and also where we'll be attaching the footrest. Okay, now that we have our domino holes in the side, it's important to transfer these exact points into the seat. So we get that by using our template that we made, knowing that these points are what we use to make the domino holes in the side. And we're gonna basically transfer this, finding about the center, marking those, and then we're gonna get a framing square and transfer one point over to the opposite side. We're gonna use a template to mark the fourth line on here. Now that we've gotten the seat to a point where I think it's gonna fit in nicely come together. Now we can do the fun part. I really enjoy the carving. It's, we're so used to doing templates and jigs and it's kind of fun once in a while. It can be scary, but it's kind of fun to do something completely freehand. For this application of the seat, we're gonna use the Cutsall dish. Um, the dish is really great for digging out that material. It digs it out quickly, but I feel like it's got a lot of control. So as you can see, I have quite a bit to go. Uh, I left quite a bit of room between my reference line and where I last ground. I also left a little bit where you can still see where those holes are. These holes are very important because it tells us how to reach a consistent depth on both the right and left side. As you can see, the back just comes out straight here, and I really wanna match these angles to um, kind of give it a sleek look and to thin it down. All right, now we're gonna start digging into the more finished details of this project. I like to sand all the way up to say a 180, and then I'll router it, and then I'll finish the whole thing off with a 220. It gives it a nice, smooth consistency. So I went ahead and dry fit it. Um, and I just cleaned the whole thing up and it fit together pretty perfectly. And that's not to say it's gonna fit together perfectly when you go to clamp because for some reason when you clamp, I don't know what happens, but sometimes things go wrong. <laughs> On the inside edge here, I try to 
keep the glue at a minimum um, just because of the squeeze out and it's a real pain to come back and clean up later. As you can see, I'm using a rubber mallet. I'd like to get this as tight as possible before I start clamping anything. At that point, if you start clamping something, it might tweak it. Um, it's almost good just to lightly tap it in and just all fall into place. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this tried and true. It's a combination of um, linseed oil and beeswax. Um, it's best to put on thin, so multiple thin coats. I'm gonna shoot for at least four coats. I'm gonna put it on and I'm gonna let it dry for an hour and then I'm gonna wipe it down and then let it dry for a day. And then I'll burnish it with a very fine steel wool. So we've just finished putting our last coat on this piece and it's always exciting putting on the last coat. It's always exciting to see what you created. And I hope through this video, um, through these, these methods and techniques that we've shown you, you're able to go out there and create your own piece. And I hope that through this it makes building furniture a little less intimidating. I know we just covered a lot, so if you need any more details on parts of this video, please go to woodcraft.com slash jewelry.